What's up everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Ethan Mitchell and today we're going to cover part two of the Peridonafi review. Okay, so we will quickly go over the camera settings and then get right into the flight modes. Located at the bottom right, we have the camera settings. Press the photo video toggle to switch between photo and video. When in photo mode, the mode menu will display single or timer. The timer delay can be set in settings under the camera. When video is selected, we get standard, cinema, hyperlapse, slow motion, and high frame rate. So first we will go over standard mode and hyperlapse as they have the same camera settings. These options give you access to 4K and 1080p, both at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. Both native and P-Log picture styles are available. 4K can zoom up to 1.4X and 1080p up to 2.8X. The hyperlapse speed is adjusted in settings under camera. The hyperlapse is automatically created by the app. Next is cinema mode. Cinema mode gives you a wide 4K at 24 frames per second. The resolution is 4096 by 2160 and HDR is not available. Keep in mind when filming in this resolution that the footage dimension will not match standard 4K and may have black bars on the top and the bottom of the screen. Finally, we have slow motion and high frame rate. Under these two options, we only get 1080p, but it gives us the higher frame rates, 48, 50, and 60 frames per second. The only difference between these two settings is that slow motion will automatically create the slowed down footage for you. High frame rate can be played back at normal speed, but can be slowed down in post. On to exposure, you have auto and pro. Under auto, shutter speed, ISO, and weight balance are all controlled by the camera, and you can adjust exposure by the exposure index. By pressing the auto button, we can also switch to pro mode and have control over shutter speed, ISO, and white balance. I personally prefer manual mode on just about all my cameras because during filming you will encounter a lot of different lighting situations and in auto the exposure will be all over the place and it's very noticeable in the footage. Here you can see the exposure changing as the drone covers over the field. Next to the exposure menu we have the picture style and you can choose between natural and p-log. The natural profile is nice if you're not into doing a lot of color grading and P-Log is very flat giving you more dynamic range to have the most latitude in post. One of the disadvantages of filming in P-Log is that it has such a flat profile that it can be difficult to get correct exposure. So let's talk about the HDR. The HDR can only be used in 4K, native profile, and automatic exposure controls. The exposure can be adjusted with the exposure index. HDR also can only be accessed in standard and hyperlapse mode. I'm still experimenting with the HDR to find out what the best settings and conditions would be. So far I've found it to be very noisy and just have a weird look to it, but on occasion I have had it turn out really nice. You can download footage via USB cable by connecting the drone to a computer, and in my initial tests I've seen transfer rates up to about 20 megabytes per second. So at this rate, it's definitely much faster to pull the card and plug the card directly into the computer. You can also download footage to your device, but at this time, it does not work with all devices. In my testing, this does not work with the Galaxy S7 Edge, but it does work with the iPhone S6 and the Asus ZenPad 10. Now that we have covered the camera settings, let's get the Anafi in the air. You can press the on-screen launch button or launch button on the remote to get the Anafi airborne. This drone also has a hand launch feature to quickly get in the air. If you hold the drone, it'll sense that you're holding it and you can press hand launch on the screen or you can press the launch button on the controller and the motors will spin up. Simply toss the drone in the air and it'll spring to life and hold its position. You can also hand land the drone, but I don't really like to hand land this drone because as it lands in your hand, it wants to wobble around a lot and it feels like you could drop it. I prefer to grab the drone out of the air. Like the DJI drones, if you grab the drone and turn it past 90 degrees, it'll automatically shut off the motors. So on to the flight modes. Under piloting, we have manual flight, cameraman, follow me, smart dronies, touch fly, and flight plan. First up is manual. This is where you spend most of your time maneuvering the drone around. In this mode, we also get four different cine shots, 360, reveal, rise, and epic. These shots will start from the drone's current location and heading. 
360 is a slow pan to the left or to the right. Reveal turns the gimbal down, moves forward, and slowly turns the gimbal up. The first option is slow and will take approximately 100 feet. The second option is faster and will take about 200 feet. Rise turns the gimbal down, moves straight up, and slowly turns the gimbal up and does a 360 at the top. The first will go up to approximately 100 feet in total. The second will move faster and go up to about 200 feet. Epic is similar to DJI's Droney or Unique's Journey mode. The drone will fly backwards and rise in height. The first option is slow and will go out to approximately 100 feet. The second option is faster and will go out to approximately 200 feet. You will also notice that with all these automatic flight modes that there is a status bar that appears in the button. The status bar will indicate where the drone is at in the maneuver. Next up is Cameraman, and this is by far one of my favorites. This feature alone will make anyone look like a professional drone pilot. This mode uses the camera's optical system to lock onto an object you designate and controls the gimbal tilt and drone yaw in order to keep the object in the middle of the frame. This feature works great and does not rely on GPS. Simply draw a box over the object, make sure the box is green with a solid green outline to ensure the drone is locked on. Now you can maneuver the drone up, down, left, right, forward, and back, and the drone will yaw and tilt the gimbal automatically to keep the object in the middle of the frame. This makes very challenging shots a piece of cake. I've noticed that when moving up or down quickly, the gimbal has a slight head bob to it that is noticeable in the footage. Hopefully a firmware update will fix this problem. Next up is Smart Dronies. Here we have Dolly Zoom and one version of Boomerang. Dolly Zoom comes in three flavors, Zoom In, Zoom Out, and Zoom In and Out. With this feature, simply draw a box around the object you want to zoom on and press the zoom option you want. The drone will move forward and backwards, so make sure the area is clear. Boomerang works much the same way. Draw a box around the subject you want to boomerang from and pick the boomerang option you want, short and slow or fast and long. Next is TouchFly, and this feature requires a map, so you will need to have your cellular data on. In TouchFly, you can touch a point on the map and the drone will fly to that spot. You can control the height with the on-screen slider. This feature also has Orbit, Parabola, Tornado, and another boomerang located under Cine Shots. Orbit will do a 360 to the left or right of the point that is picked on the map. Parabola will arch up and above while tilting the gimbal down, do a little spin at the top of the arc, and then come back down the other side. Tornado is very similar to DJI Helix, and the drone will move away from the object as it increases in height. And here we also have a, another version of Boomerang, while well, the Boomerang will do its maneuver away from the point selected on the map. Parabola, Tornado, and Boomerang all come in two flavors. The first option will be a slow and lower option, and the second option will be faster and move farther away. As with all automated flight modes, it's a good habit to make sure you look at the controller and know where the stop button is, and also make sure the area is clear because this drone does not have obstacle avoidance. Also, another really great feature this drone has into it is that in any of the automated flight modes, if you touch the controls, it'll automatically stop. Next, we have Follow Me, and the Follow Me on this drone is insane. This is definitely one of the best Follow Me's I've seen on the drone, and it really does a great job of tracking you. Even when I tried to lose the drone, it eventually found me and started tracking me again using the GPS in the phone. Orbit, Parabola, Tornado, and Boomerang are all available in this mode and will do the maneuver while tracking the subject. I've seen some people say that this feature will only work if you're holding the controller, but I have not found that to be the case in my experience. If I put the controller down and start walking around, the drone will still follow me. So let's talk about flight plan. I will be honest with you, flight plans tend to make me very nervous, but this one has seemed to work really well. Flight plan also uses a map, so you will need to have your cellular data on. Pick the points on the map you want the drone to fly and make a path. Next, you can highlight each point and change height as well as turn the drone to face in any direction you want. You can also highlight each leg and change the speed at which the drone will fly between the points. If you press here next to the play button, you will access the flight path in a timeline. Here you can add a pause, change gimbal angle and speed, put in a 360, and view the takeoff and land points. 
You can also save a flight path in the event that you want the drone to follow the same path for multiple shots. You can also create a flight path by flying the drone to the points on the map and pressing the map to mark that point. So follow me and flight pan are in-app purchases. Both are $17.99 in the US. So the big question is, are they worth the money? Well, both of them work really, really great. And I don't really know if I will use flight plan all that much just because I don't really have a use for it. But for somebody that does, it works really great. Um, the follow me, I love. This is definitely one of the best follow me's I've seen on a drones. And in the past, I haven't really used follow me a whole lot just because I haven't found it to be very reliable on many other drones. This drone, I feel it's definitely locked in and I feel very confident in using it. And finally, I wanna go over the return to home. Return to home initialization is dependent on the distance the drone is from the home point and how much battery life is left. Once activated, the drone will fly up to 65 feet or 20 meters if below that height, or maintain its current height if, if above 65 feet. I would like to see this made adjustable as 65 feet is a bit on the low side for a lot of the areas I fly in. So let's go over my wish list for Parrot and I hope they implement into their app in the future. Number one, histogram. This would be really great in getting proper exposure. Number two, custom profiles to adjust the sharpness, saturation, and contrast of the image. I feel the P-Log is too flat for my taste and the natural is just a bit oversaturated for my taste as well. Number three, work out the HDR issues. The HDR is very noisy and I would like to see that cleaned up. Number four, get the GPS dialed in to minimize the drift at low altitude. Cause be honest, this makes people nervous. I have noticed the drone will hold position great when only using the optical flow camera. As soon as the GPS locks onto the drone, it begins to drift. This leads me to believe that the drone stops using the optical flow camera once the GPS is locked on. This is only noticeable at low altitude within 20 feet of the ground. Once the drone is high in the air, it's not even noticeable and it seems extremely stable. This is the reason why DJI drones are so locked in when they're low to the ground. They are using the GPS signal and the optical flow camera to maintain position. Number five, a fast charger for the batteries. Currently using my MacBook Pro charger, it takes just over an hour and a half to charge a battery from 3%. I would definitely like to see this number down to an hour using a different charger. So let's quickly go over some pros and cons. This drone is very reliable and has not missed a beat or misbehaved at all since I've been flying it, and I feel very confident with this drone. Another big plus to this drone is the noise. It is probably one of the most quietest drones on the market right now. It has a great flight time, a true 25 minutes. The 4K camera on this drone is excellent. All the flight modes work great, and it is extremely quick to deploy, and you can charge it with a USB cable. So let's talk about the cons. The GPS drift at low height is definitely something that I would like to see them work on. And you know, this will make a lot of people feel more confident in the drone. Charge times, I would really like to see those charge times get down. This drone does not have any obstacle avoidance. So if that's a must have for you, then this is not the drone for you. The app still has a few bugs in it. So hopefully we'll see Parrot work that out in short order. As of right now, extra batteries are in limited supply. The HDR is very noisy and due to its lightweight construction, it's going to be viewed as cheap. So who is this drone for? Well, that depends on your must haves. If your must haves include a drone that is super quiet, 25 minutes of flight time, an excellent camera, can look up and is not restricted by any software, then the Anafi's for you. So there you have it, the Parrot Anafi. This has quickly become one of my favorite go-to drones and I fly it almost exclusively now. I've also purchased this drone, so if I, you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. So thanks for watching. I am extremely pleased to see that a drone has come out that can actually compete with DJI. And in the next video, we're going to see how well it really does. Next video, we put the Parrot Anafi up against the DJI Mavic Air and see how it measures up. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and our other travel videos, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.